Okay, uh, I'm in the shop here. It's a Sunday, um, waiting for my grandson to show up. Um, and we're going to start putting this transmission back in. But what I'm going to do as I'm in here um, is try and dr uh, drill a hole at the end of these uh, cracks, these fracture cracks at the in the transmission. So um, welcome to another shop update, guys. So what I've done is uh, I've identified where the two cracks are. They're, they're kind of uh, 180 degrees from each other. Um, th so there's this one on top of the transmission. I just took a piece of uh, 400 um, paper, uh, grip sandpaper, and, and kind of cleaned it off try to identify where the end of the crack is. Um, what I'll do is I'll take a punch and a hammer and just uh, make a small punch, uh, again aluminum, just a small punch mark at the end of the crack and drill it with a small bit. And what that will do is it'll relieve the stress fracture uh, or the stress on it from the crack continuing on. But I'll uh, set the tripod up and I'll bring it back. Just an eighth inch bit. It doesn't have to be big. Again, all it's doing is just relieving that that uh, stress. And I'll flip it over and do the same on the other side. Okay, so this one on the other side is a little harder to define. What happened is it started in here and then it started to follow, let's call it the flange of the, of the transmission casing up this way. And then you can see here there's a hairline crack in there. Now, I almost thought because of the residue in it it was a casting issue so um just for safety's sake i'm going to drill it here and i'm also going to drill it up in here um so that it doesn't continue along that flange area so two drills on this one uh just to kind of be safe than sorry this casting it's hard to tell because look at look at this area um, it, it looks like the whole thing has been cracked, but it's, it's, uh, kind of like spalling, uh, almost. I, I'm not really sure what caused that. Um, doesn't go through, it's just on the surface. Yeah, so I'm going to do here, and I'm going to do up in here. What I actually had to do is, uh, um, got a, a die grinder with a uh, carbide bit on it and uh, got that out a little bit so I could define where where that went up into that area because it was kind of greasy caked up and hard to see so as I said from that when I shot the handheld camera when you just saw the clip of um, I'm going to do two of them in here. One going up the seam way so that it doesn't spread up the seam where that flange is and, and one out here farther. So I punched it in the two spots and
Okay, so what we did is reassembled um, th this, and I think it has something to do with a shifting fork. Um, we have uh, redid that, cleaned up the um, mm -hmm. flange areas, and are going to uh, install gasket maker lube, gasket maker material for this. Put the input shaft onto it. So yeah, we're good. On the whole service manual. Okay, so here's a box open from the South Bend dual disc clutch. Um, we've already taken some of the parts out. We're underneath the truck and Matt's under the truck and it's going to start removing the old flywheel. Yeah, baby. I put candy in my suitcase. Did you? So this is a pilot bearing that is the root cause of all the entire problem. That's what failed to begin with to allow that transmission to do what it did. Maybe the weakest link in this entire system. Kind of a little silhouetted shot here of Matt uh, cleaning up that. He got the old clutch off, as you, or a flywheel off, as you can see down there. Ready to put the new one on. Okay, we're showing you a before and after shot of the throw out bearing. So, this is a new throw out bearing, and this is the old one. And hopefully, you can see how grooved it is in there. Yeah. Should I put a little bit of that assembly lube in the uh, pilot bearing hole? Or does it matter? Yeah, it probably does.
Give me one that doesn't have anything on it, just to start. Are there torque spikes for this? Oh yeah. You're getting the truck back spoiler. Me too. I can't wait to take Josh's truck back to him. It's been you can dump the transmission fluid in, okay? One wheel bolts are 101 pounds. What? I don't know what you're talking about. The uh, pressure plate bolts are 17 pounds. I like that. Hey, the pressure plate, the, the Allen? Yeah. Yeah, they were a lot more than 17. What face? 101 pounds? Yep. Do opposite. I am. Okay. And, uh, I don't know what I do with my. What are you looking for? The Allen socket. So, my dad today is fixing the truck, which is... Dad, say hi to camera. Hello. He, what's this called? It's a transmission. He's fixing the transmission mission right now. Very big. And this is under the truck. Okay. Hi guys, I said I'd make a part two and I am. What part are you fixing? It's called the throw out bearing and the fork. Got it. Actually, I feel like Papa's holding it and you're actually making a really. This is going to get posted. I am. Okay, so we put the throw out bearing into the fork. Grease. We're using some grease. I wish I could get inside of there and I could see. No, oh, I'll bring it up. Here, let me bring you up so you can see. Mm, no, thank you. No, the camera, not you. Oh. Yeah, give it to Papa. Okay. 
I'm the movie producer. Okay, so we got the transmission all back to assembled again, and we're back under the truck and ready to put it in place. Kind of a precise thing. So we'll shut you off for a minute and bring you back when we got it. Okay, I'm gonna do something here I've never done before. I was shooting a video clip from home just to uh, let you know what's going on. I left you off. We were under the truck trying to get the transmission uh, in or starting to get the transmission in. It took a long time to get it in. Um, it wasn't because it was an alignment issue and the use of the transmission jack that we have. Uh, seems like transmission jacks nowadays are made more for automatic transmission, um, holding it with that big pan underneath an automatic transmission. It's not yeah, really great on standard transmissions where the contour of the bottom isn't flat. Um, you spend a lot of time repositioning the transmission on the jack so that you can get to the adjustment knobs on it so that you can change the pitch of the transmission or um, the how it goes from side to side, the pitch from side to side. Uh, but we got it finally. It took a, a lot of swearing and quite a while, but we finally got it. Um, and then I had to leave. So what you're going to see next is after he was completed, he stayed by himself, uh, put the uh, drive shaft back in, uh, got everything back together, the shifter back on, the fluid back in the transmission, and then um, you're going to see the clip now of where he takes it out. Let me tell you what I got going on here. What I'm doing is uh, draining the uh, rear end fluid <clears throat> out of my uh, differential. Um, I checked the oil a, a week or so ago and I didn't like the uh, color 
not the, so much the color. It almost looks like there could have been a little bit of water in it. So what I do, I'm doing is pulling the differential cover off because there is no drain plug on the rear differential. Uh, you got to pull the cover off. I'm going to drain that out. I've got a new cover for it. I, I bought one of those Banks covers, um, and I'll take you over and show it to you. So here I am over to the cover. This is the bottom and um, the inside, and this is the back of it. Now, let me tell you why I bought it. I bought it for two reasons, because I, I want, they have cooling fins. It actually pulls air in and blows it up over the cover. Um, if you ever saw, the uh, Banks made a video on uh, rear end differential covers. <clears throat> and he shows the dead air space back there, which creates uh, heat in this thing. Especially when I'm making hauls with heavy loads, uh, stuff like that. So the, the kind of there's two reasons why I bought it. That is because of the cooling. It also provides a um, drain plug on the bottom of it, right there, and a sight glass so that you can see the. Um, fluid level without having to pull the plug out and stick your finger in there and kind of test it. So a um, bunch of reasons why I bought it, but that's basically it. I'll uh, kind of show you a little bit of installing it as soon as I get that old cover off. It's going to be a fairly simple process, but uh, I'll show it to you when I get it over there. So this is kind of what I was talking about. I got, it's like a foamy stuff. Now maybe that is typical of rear end fluid, but to me it almost looks like there was water or it was overheated and I, I don't know. But anyways, I, I wanted to change it. It's got, um, I'm not sure what the recommendation is, but it's got uh, 117,000 miles, I think. So I wanted to uh, get it changed. So here it is on, and I'm putting the oil into it right now. Um, it went on fairly easy. What I did is, uh, as per their directions, put a little bit of Loctite on. Um, the bolts before I put them in. Yeah. Gotta squeeze that thing to get it to flow good. Gear okay, oil. so there it is on, filled with oil, all ready to go. Now, you might be able to see that. I don't know whether you're getting blown out here or not by the light. Let me see if I can get it to where you can see it. Um, the oil level is supposed to be halfway, but they kind of said in the instruction if the uh, truck was tilted backwards that the oil level would be high, but and it, the truck is tilted backwards on the lift. So, um, yeah, T tough to, in my shop to find a level surface. So I'm not concerned about it. It's what the uh, um, the uh, manufacturer recommends uh, as far as quantity goes in it. So I'm not worried about it. <laughs> 